Hi everyone, my name is Victoria Barna and the title of my thesis is Physical Training, How to Achieve the Optimal Level. I am a dietitian and an agricultural engineer and my mission is to provide clear evidence on which activities are beneficial and which are harmful. Here you can see my team and my affiliation. We have two specific goals. The first one is investigating the effect of regular training on musculoskeletal biomarkers in healthy population, which is a systematic review and meta-analysis. Why is this research important? We know that increasing physical activity um, and optimizing exercise is seen as an optimal way to improve musculoskeletal health, but the relationship between serum biomarkers of bone turnover due to regular exercise is not known. It is still difficult to predict what mode and volume of exercise are optimal for bone health. Therefore, our aim is to study how musculoskeletal biomarkers are affected by regular training. Our clinical question is, what is the effect of regular training on bone and muscle-related biomedical parameters? To answer this question, we formulated the presented PICO framework and hypothesis. We made our systematic search in three free medical databases, and here you can see our final search key and the number of hits. At the end of the flowchart, at the end of the selection, we found 17 eligible articles for data extraction, and after reference chaser phase, we identified five more items, so at the end we included 22 articles into the final data pool. Here you can see our analyzed outcome from the 22 articles. We also made subgroups based on training group, training type, intensity, frequency, and duration. If the participants made more than three times a week training, we consider it as a high-frequency high training. And if the intervention period was longer than 16 weeks, it was considered long-duration training. Here you can see the result. Uh, the change in body mass index after regular exercise. Body mass index is a very often measured uh, physical biomarker in sport-related studies because it shows um, the change and, or the effect of exercise relatively quick, quickly. Body mass index has uh, four main categories based on VHO classification. And to calculate body mass index, we need the patient weight and height. We included three studies into this analysis with a total number of 94 patients. The mean difference for BMI was minus 0 0.96, which means that the point estimate indicates that this result is mathematically and statistically not significant and clinically irrelevant. However, I would like to highlight the first study where the difference is the largest, perhaps the exercise characteristics, because in this study the intervention was high-intensity interval training with appropriate time of rest. Here you can say, see the change in bone mineral density after regular exercise in healthy adults. Bone mineral density is also often measured in sport investigation studies because it shows the effect of exercise on bone composition and bone health. Here you can see the reference range of bone mineral density. We made two different groups based on intervention type, aerobic and resistance training group. And within aerobic training group, we also divided high and low frequency groups. The mean difference from BMD was zero, which means that there is no significant change in bone mineral density after regular training in healthy adults. Here you can see the change in osteocalcin level during aerobic exercise in healthy adults. Osteocalcin is a very important bone biomarker. It's shown the effect of exercise um, during uh, sport uh, investigations, so therefore it is often measured. If the level of osteocalcin increase, it uh, suggests um, increased bone formation, and if the level of osteocalcin decreases, it suggests bone resorption. Here you can see the unit of osteocalcin and the reference range. We included 12 studies into this analysis with a total number of 553 patients. We also divided them by high intensity and low intensity groups. 
The mean difference was 2.81, which means that this result is statistically and mathematically not significant and clinically not relevant. However, I would like to highlight these studies where the exercise characteristics was different from the others. And in these studies, the participants made 10-15 minutes of active match play, football, handball, with active break. In the meantime, in the low intensity group, there was only low intensity training and there is a meaningful decreasing trend in osteocalcin level. And finally, here you can see the change in bone alkaline phosphatase level in healthy adults. Bone alkaline phosphatase is also a very important bone metabolism biomarkers. Here we included four studies into the analysis, and the result for mean difference was 1.30, which means that this result is statistically, mathematically not significant and clinically not relevant. However, we also have an outlier here, perhaps exercise characteristics. Again, this is high intensity training with intervals and rest. We included only uh, randomized control trial into this analysis. Uh, however, our study has its strengths and limitations. So finally, the conclusion of the study is resistance training, regular aerobic training has no significant effect of osteocalcin level, bone alkaline phosphatase, bone mineral density, or BMI. However, there may be meaningful differences uh, due to high-intensity training or high-intensity interval training. The implication for practice is the importance of exercise intensity and lifestyle intervention should plan by caution. And it is also necessary to note that further research is needed regarding high-intensity exercise, high-intensity interval trainings. Here you can see the first project progress and the manuscript status and the selected journal. Our second study is investigating the effect of training on micronutrient level in healthy population. Why is this study important? We know that inadequate micronutrient intake has been linked to exercise and this may result in exercise-induced micronutrient deficiencies. However, the impact of physical activity on micronutrient status is still unclear. Therefore, our aim is to identify how micronutrient levels are affected by regular training. Our clinical question is, what is the effect of acute training on micronutrient level in healthy adults? To answer this question, we formulated the presented PICO framework, and this is our hypothesis. We found one meta-analysis in the topic, but this only investigates the immediate effect of aerobic exercise on plasma serum zinc level. Here you can see our preliminary search key, which was divided by trace elements and vitamin, and here you can see the number of hits on PubMed. So in summary, we have two ongoing projects, and the planned submission date of our first project is this year in August. And finally, I would like to thank you for your attention with a quote from Christopher Reeve, once you choose hope, anything is possible. Thank you for your attention. So I, I'm very excited and curious about the uh, the bone density uh, as a result of exercise. And question number one, so I've got two questions. Question number one, did uh, participants have a healthy BMI when they started exercising? And question number two, yes, bone consists of minerals and a lot of other things which make it resistant to, 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 to stretch and all the other things. So is there any other measure that could be potentially uh, be a, a, a meaningful uh, measure of, of uh, bone changes to exercise, mm -hmm. i.e. fibrous tissue in the bone, probably some kind of, of effect, must, there must be some kind of effect on the bones. So those are the two questions. Number one, did they have normal bone mineral density when they started and is there any other meaningful measure for bone health that can potentially change as a result of exercise? 
Thank you for your question. So regarding bone mineral density, uh, in the aerobic training group, uh, the heterogeneity was 0%, so it was a quite homogeneous population, which means that the patient characteristics and exercise characteristics was the same, so they were in the same uh, uh, weight uh, or um, in the same status. But there were, there were obese group, I think, but um, um, the the whole group was has the same characteristics. So at the end, it was no different on the effect on the uh, high on the high overweight or underweight or normal weight people. And um, the second question is: Is there any other uh, measurement? Yeah, actually, therefore we measured the biomarkers. So. So what's the cut in bone alkaline phosphatase? And, and we actually, we, we included more biomarkers into the analysis, but we didn't find enough study. Any further questions? Oh, just one last. Were there any studies that have checked the exercise on bone mineral density in osteopenic or osteoporotic patients? Yes, but we didn't include them because this study only uh, for healthy adults. So we excluded uh, any comorbidities. If I may, one more question. Uh, if I see the comment, the longest follow-up was one year? Mm, uh, yes, uh, actually, yeah. Uh, usually, it, usually this is a, uh, yeah. Is it enough to manifest the change in? In uh, bone mineral density? Yes. yes, it should be enough. It Thank should you. Be enough. We have time for further questions. A methodological question I would pose, uh, why didn't you exclude those papers that contained or presented uh, huge outlying data? Uh, we didn't exclude them. Why don't you? Oh, why don't if you did? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, because uh, we are planning to make uh, subgroups based on these uh, outliers. Mm -hmm. We just received the results uh, a few days ago, so this is the first, first draft of our final results, mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't exclude them on purpose mm -hmm. because we would mm -hmm. like to make more subgroups. Mm -hmm. and how reliable do you think BMI is in different uh, people with different body shapes? I mean, muscular uh, or lean or? Yeah, BMI has uh, its own limitation, but it's still uh, the best tool mm -hmm. to, to follow mm -hmm. the effect of exercise mm -hmm. on body weight. Um, and it has uh, its limitation, yeah, of course. And uh, if you measure BMI, you still cannot see the body composition, mm -hmm. for example. But, um, but it's changed relatively quickly in a short mm -hmm. period. So if uh, mm -hmm. the study is short and mm -hmm. they just have a few weeks, mm -hmm. it's still the, still the best. Yeah, probably uh, in body or something would help in this respect? Yes, would they would, but in these studies, they, they didn't mm -hmm. really use in body, just BMI or, or DEXA. Mm -hmm.